These are the ingredients you need for make curry pot pusing. You need to make the dough as well, all purpose flour and some margarine or butter if you prefer. First you need to make a curry paste. The curry paste needs to be quite pasty and not too watery and you have to mix with water until it forms a paste. And if you like it spicy, you can also add a bit of chilli powder as well. You need to boil the potatoes until it becomes al dente, not too mushy and not too hard. Because later on, as you do the filling, you'll need to cook the potatoes again in the curry pot. To make the filling, you have to eat. You have to heat up some hot oil, sauté the onions and garlic until they become fragrant, and don't let them brown too much. Add the paste that you made earlier. Mix the whole mixture together until it's well mixed and as the oil starts to form on the surface, it's already done and you can add the other ingredient after that. Now you can add your chicken. Some people like to cook their chicken beforehand but I think cooking the chicken together with the paste makes it more delicious. You can also now add the potatoes that you've half boiled and mix again until everything is properly mixed. If your mixture becomes too dry as you're trying to cook it, just add a bit of water and adjust your seasonings as you go along. I've added some chopped Chinese celery, uh, salt and pepper to taste at this part. But if you don't like Chinese celery, you can take out the option as well. Mix everything together until everything is well mixed and then set it aside in a bowl to cool. To make the water dough, which is one of the two doughs that you make to make, you have to add the flour. Three cups of all-purpose flour with half cup of margarine and half teaspoon of salt. You can also do this method by using your machine or mixer, but I prefer to do it by hand. As the butter starts to break apart, or the margarine, you need to add water bit by bit until the mixture comes off from the sides of your bowl easily. Don't add too much water at one go. Just have a feel for how it reacts towards the side of your bowls. As you can see here, it's starting to clump together. So no need to add any more water. Just knead it until everything comes into one ball. The mixture I made here is good for 30 pieces of curry puff, medium size, but um, you can also make a double portion or even make it a bit more smaller. Here I use the mixer to make sure that everything is 
um, mixed together as in the butter and also the flour now to make the egg the second dough which is the butter or oil dough add the one cup of margarine or shortening if you prefer to two to one and a half cups of all-purpose flour combine everything until it's well mixed Because this is a very crumb crumbly dough, the oil dough, you need to at least chill it in the fridge so that it doesn't break apart. Treat how you would a um, short crust sort of dough where the butter is the butter content is very high. So what I did before I chilled my oil dough, I shaped it into a ball and divided it into roughly four equal size portions. And then those four equal size portions I made into a ball. Why do you need an oil dough and a water dough? It's because when you make the two pieces together, um, it will form the, the crust, the flaky crust that is very evident in a curry pap pusing. So before you chill, take a bag like so. Oil the insides of the bag a bit so it doesn't stick to the bag and put in the four equal portion uh, oil dough balls inside and then continue to chill in the fridge for about an hour. Test every half an hour or so to see whether it's malleable. Then you divide each oil dough into two and shape two balls. And take some water dough and shape it into a larger ball first take the water dough and flatten it out into a circle about half a millimeter thick then what you do is you take the oil dough and place that in the center of the water dough and then carefully use the sides of the water dough to close it up and encase it. Doesn't need to be pretty, it just needs to be encased properly so that when you flatten the whole piece together, it becomes one giant piece. So try and get as less holes as you can, wherever possible. And then join the bottom parts together and start to <coughs> shape it into a sphere or round shape. Once your ball is like quite smooth and does not show any more or too much cracks, what you do is you flatten the ball a bit and then you continue to roll out the entire ball into an elongated piece like so. If you see that your dough starts to stick to the surface of your board, you can put a bit of, of uh, flour but I wouldn't recommend it because it will make it taste pasty when you fry it. So, if it starts to stick, just pop it in the fridge and then take it out again. So, now that you flatten the dough, cut it into two like this. And roll out a little more. And then what you do here, is you take one end and roll the dough as tight as you can. But not too tight. Until the end, and you'll have a one log like so so here is where you take it and flatten it again roll it out until it becomes an oblong shaped piece and
You can also make it a bit wider if you want. Um, I chose to make it a slightly more wider. And then you take one end and roll it back again. Like I said, if it starts to stick, you can always take the dough and put it in the fridge before you start working. So this process is done twice, as you can see. This is the second roll. Now what you do is, you cut about four equal size segments from this one log. Um, give or take a same size. One can be bigger or the other can be smaller. It's, it doesn't matter. And you cut four pieces from here. So if one log can make four pieces, you can sort of gauge how many curry pups you will end up with. So from the top, you just roll it out and you can see that it starts to make spirally shapes and that will will end up making up the flaky flaky part of your dough when you fry it in the hot oil. Um, once you put your filling that is cooled, um, please don't put too much filling inside. If you, if you can't enclose it, then it will be very difficult for you to fry or when you fry it, then the filling will start pouring out. So what you do here is you sort of um, press the ends together and you will, you need to start crimping from the end by pinching and pulling like so. doesn't need to be hard but it's sort of like a pattern of pinch and pull, pinch and pull. So um, until the end is properly encased, you can see the spirals there and um, you can start frying. So once you fry and the um, the pastry starts turning golden brown, you can take it out and strain it on a paper towel. You can also um, cook this halfway um, just until it starts to become a darker color and you can keep it in the freezer and serve it to guests um, and you know when when your guests come over you can just fry the frozen ones until it's really cooked and you have your curry pak pusing you can also enjoy this in a sweet savory or um, sweet filling as well so try this and i hope you like it <laughs>